Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. The extra L is for list. Because today we're counting down a list of the top five horrible homebrew rules. Now don't get me wrong. One of the great things about Dungeons and Dragons is all the different ways it can be played. If your table doesn't like a rule, you don't use it. If you'd like to adjust something, go for it. It really is that simple. To that end, people have been using house or homebrew rules for just about as long as they've been playing games. Some are good, some are not so good. But even though I'm talking about some of the more unpopular ones, if you like these rules, that's fine. Go ahead and use them. We all have different tastes and different ways we like to play. So do not feel personally attacked if you like any of these rules we're about to talk about. We're all friends here. Unless, of course, we're talking about rule number two. Then take that personally, freak. Starting off at number five on our list of horrible homebrew rules is probably the most popular one. Critical failure charts. Meaning if you're all not one on an attack, something bad happens. It can be anything from breaking your weapon, to hitting an ally, to falling prone, to whatever else. Hell, I've even heard of players cutting off their own heads on a natural one. Which makes total sense because, as we all know, that used to happen all the time during medieval battles. And at medieval times. Alright boys, it's time. Let's get them. And remember, we're doing this for Queen and... Where's Jerry? What? He cut off his own head during the morning practices? <sighs> Curses. My dad. Both grandfathers. Two uncles. Three aunts. Seven cousins. And brother all died the exact same way. When will scientists ever find a cure for the leading cause of death in our times? Cutting off your own head! I had a DM who used a variation of this once. He didn't bother with a chart. It was basically, roll nat one, break your weapon. This is the group that ended up shadow booting me, but that's another story. After learning we basically had a 1 in 20 chance of bringing our weapons on each attack, I had the very bright idea of bringing a bunch of extra weapons with me. Because, as you probably know if you've been around here for a while, my natural 1 count is comparable with Scrooge McDuck's money count. The DM did not appreciate my outside the stupid rule box thinking, and decided carrying extra weapons would be too heavy. For my 18th strength, War Cleric. After that, I decided, you know what? I'll just roll up a monk. You can't break a weapon if you don't use one, right? Right? Haha. <laughs> Checkmate, DM. While that is true, once again, the DM was not impressed by my stellar planning. So he decided, if you did an unarmed attack and rolled a nat one, you broke a bone in your hand. And sadly, when I went to the bone store to resupply, I realized it was a very different kind of bone store than I thought. This was super annoying at the time, but now it's a great segue into our next rule. At number four, we have death and dismemberment tables. Are you the type of player who thinks, you know what, I really hate my character, but death is way too good for that a-hole, so how can I really, really make him suffer? I've got it. I'll maim him. Make him pray for the sweet embrace of death but not give it to him for a while. <laughs> if that sounds like you, then have I got the perfect rule for you. It's based on an optional rule from the Dungeons Master Guide. The way it works is when you hit zero HP, or take a big hit, or something else that the DM will tell you about, you get to roll on the death and dismemberment chart for such lovely things as getting a charisma affecting scar, losing a limb, or of course, death. Like critical failures, there are hundreds if not thousands of different charts, but these are the staples. Now some people will tell you how these charts are a great tool for role playing, but as we all know, people are stupid. Not you of course, the fact you are watching this video shows how smart and handsome slash beautiful and totally hygienic you are, but other people, they are the worst. The kind of people who like these charts are probably the same kind of morons who think Jerry Springer is refined TV. Or, <laughs> Canada is real. Just to be clear, those are Biff's words, not mine. In third place, we're back to a rule about crits, both good and bad. Nat 20s are always a success, and Nat 1s are always a setback. 
When I was reading through the D&D One rules, which I did on a live stream right here and will do again when the next set is released, hint hint, one thing I did not like is that natural 20s are always a success. Because sometimes unscrupulous players will try to take advantage by rolling for impossible things like, I don't know, me. I'll admit it, I'll get away with whatever the DM will let me. For example, I'm rolling to jump over the moon. Cause you know that degenerate braggy cow owes me about 350 and someone needs to put her in her place. Oh look, natural 20. That's one small step for debauchery and one giant leap for pettiness. The other side of the coin is not any better. Do you know what the cost of a natural one is? Not succeeding. Don't get me wrong. If the DM narrates some stupid failure like your nat one on the lockpick attempt made a loud fart sounding squeal and your party members all think it was you and start calling you poopy pants, I'm down with that. But if now it's even harder to get in like, oh, you accidentally double locked the door, whoopsies, not a fan. Up next, we have a horrible homebrew that would have earned the number one spot if it was more prevalent. But thankfully it is rare, so I'm sticking here at number two. Uh, speaking of sticking things somewhere, our next rule is roll for uh, pregnancy. Because, you know, forcing a character to get pregnant when they don't want to is just plain creepy, crappy, and a whole lot of other things I cannot say or YouTube might ban me. Now, I don't have all the details because the Redditor who suggested it didn't offer it and I sure as hell wasn't about to ask, but I think we can figure it out. So if you're a DM who thinks it's a good idea, just don't. Before we get to our final horrible homebrew, an honorable mention goes to any rule that nerfs a character ability, especially if it wasn't discussed before the game starts. Hot take. In D&D, there are no broken OP whatever character classes, unless of course you count homebrew. Then there's a buttload of them. Are all the classes and races perfectly balanced? No. But you do not need to ruin a character by taking away what they do best. If one character is outclassing others with their abilities, buff the others. Don't punish the player. Or, and this is just a crazy idea, just leave it alone. Not all characters are built for the same thing. If they were, it'd be a really boring game. That same fighter who's doing crazy damage in battle is most likely sitting back twiddling her thumbs while the bard handles the talking parts. Are you going to nerf the cleric's perception? The barbarian's crocheting skills. That bard seduction skills? I think not. Then leave the combat abilities alone. Okay, rant over. And our top, number one, A+, plus, worst homebrew rule, and my personal least favorite is... Awarding experience individually based on the player's actions. Because while it might sound cool to you, it usually translates to whoever does the most damage slash gets the most kills gets the most experience. Because nothing builds camaraderie and party cohesiveness more than rewarding players who kill steal. It also usually has the snowball effect. Once one player gets a level or two on the others, it becomes much easier to keep getting the final blow, so even more levels. D&D is a collaborative game. But when one player is level 8 while everyone else is still around level 4, it becomes a story about the hero and his idiot sidekicks who can't kill anything. Not only that, but it punishes important things like healing and tanking. Okay, first off, stop calling me poopy pants. It is part of my pre-battle ritual and I cannot change that. Secondly, no one makes statues about healers or tanks or any other losers. The real name of the game shouldn't be Dungeons and Dragons, it should be Damage and... Uh... Damage. The first damage is for the hurting you put on your enemies, and the second damage is for the damage it will do to your gaming groups and real life friendships. But that doesn't matter. Only squares prefer having <laughs> real life friends to being awesome in a game. So those were my top 5 worst homebrew rules. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you like some of them? Do you think I'm a raving lunatic? Let me know in the comments. Or you could tell me your most hated homebrew rule, or any rule you think I missed. Also, please with the likes, comments, and subs, 
Heck, I'll even take dislikes, because any attention is good attention. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, play your character. Don't let your character play you.